Hello, uh, my name is Pastor Kathy Light and I am the pastor here at Elm Street Congregational Church. And welcome to our uh, next storybook that we're going to read. We just finished Blotch and now we are going to read the, uh, this book. It's called Bible Legends. And we are going to learn about what Midrash is. So if you have been stayed, uh, tuning in on Tuesdays for the Jacob story, you'll know that we are filling in the blanks of that story. And that's what Midrash is. So Midrash is trying to answer questions in a biblical story that aren't answered in the Bible. So these are stories about stories in the Bible. And the first one that we're going to look at is the Adam and Eve story. And it's told from the point of view of the four winds of the earth. Um, I, uh, I've had this book for a long time and I have really enjoyed reading these stories because they give us a different view of how other people see Bible stories. This may surprise you, but not everybody understands the stories in the same way. So I am going to start, this is chapter one, and it's called The Moaning of the Winds. Uh, first, I'll give the little uh, glitch about the Bible, uh, the Bible passage itself that it starts at, and then we'll read the story. It is recounted in Genesis that the creation of Adam and Eve was preceded by five days in which the rest of the world was brought into being. On the first day, God created the heaven and the earth and separated the darkness and the light. On the second day, the waters above were separated from those below. On the third day, the waters on earth were gathered together so that dry land appeared and trees and plants of every kind blossomed on the fourth, <clears throat> or blossomed forth. On the fourth day, the sun and the moon and the stars were created. And on the fifth day, all kinds of creatures that creep and all winged birds were created. On the sixth day, all of the rest of creation was completed, including wild beasts and cattle and Adam, the first man. Sometime after this, God put Adam to sleep and withdrew one of his ribs from which he created Eve. Adam and Eve were placed in a beautiful and fruitful garden, the Garden of Eden, where their only prohibition God gave them was to not eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Of this story, I am sure you remember. So here is the legend, the story about the Bible story. One day, long ago, there gathered on the highest mountain of the earth, the north wind, the south wind, the west wind, and the east wind. There on the summit, as quietly as ever, each wind breathed and moaned as if in sorrow. The peak of the mountain heard the moaning of the winds and said, O north wind, why do you sigh so sadly? Strong and friendly mountain, said the north wind, you stand above the earth so high with your gaze toward heaven, you cannot see the trouble in the world at your feet. Yes, O mountain, said the west wind. We who blow all around the world, we winds know that today something sad has happened on earth. Today is only the sixth day of creation, said the south wind, yet everything in the universe is weeping. Even God who created the world, the east wind added, is sad as at what is happening. I knew that something dreadful was going on, said the peak of the mountains. I saw the sun grow dark and I heard the clouds weep, but I do not know why. Please tell me what terrible thing can have happened. Listen, O mountain, said the north wind, and we shall tell you the story of Adam and Eve. You, O mountain, who cannot move, have never seen the wonderful garden which God has made. It is the most beautiful place in all the world. 
The grass there is bright green, like a thick velvet carpet. The roses are large and red and so fragrant that their scent of perfumes the whole garden. The birds sing more sweetly than anywhere else on earth. All the animals are friends, everyone is kind, and into this marvelous garden, death has never come. There is only light and music and pleasure and life. And then in this paradise, God placed Adam. The man towered above all the creatures. So tall was he that while his feet were on the ground, his head reached into the sky. And so broad was he that his body spread from east to west. And he was as handsome as he was powerful. But more remarkably than this he was his grace. He was honest. He was good. He was noble. Everything in this garden is yours, Adam, God said. And you may use it as you wish. But there is one thing which I forbid. You must never eat the fig of the fig tree. I promise, answered Adam. After a few happy hours had passed, Adam began to feel lonely. So God made Eve out of Adam's rib and she became his wife. He explained to her immediately that she should have everything in the garden she wanted except the figs from the fig tree. He warned her that it was forbidden fruit, that she must never touch it, and she promised. After a while, she wandered around by herself to see all the wonders of the garden. She admired whatever she saw, and every moment brought her a new delight. As she walked among enjoying the loveliness of Eden, she met the serpent. He was a very clever fellow. When he wished he could walk upright, he could speak like a man, and he was jealous because God had made man the master of the animals. He thought that he was just as good as Adam, if not better. So he cunningly plotted to bring about Adam's downfall. And he walked along brooding over his resentment making his plans when he met Eve. Oh, hello, Eve, said the serpent. Hello, serpent, said Eve. You are very beautiful, Eve. Oh, thank you. She was pleased with the compliment. I wonder why, said the serpent slyly, a woman as beautiful as you should be so stupid. I am not stupid, she protested. If you aren't stupid, the serpent said, then why do you let Adam tell you what you may and may not do? Just look at this fig tree. He put his hand out and he touched it. See what luscious fruit grows on the tree. He plucked a big yellow fig off a branch and Adam won't even permit you to touch the tree upon which this grows. It is an Adam who forbids it, but God, Eve said. Don't know, don't you know why, said the serpent? The fig tree is the tree of knowledge. If you eat its fruit, you will know as much as God. At present, you and Adam are the masters of the earthly creation. But if you don't hurry and eat a fig from the tree of knowledge and become independent, God will soon make other creatures who will rule over you. I most certainly would not like that, Eve said. I want to be queen of everything and every creature. She began to extend her hand toward the tree. Then quickly she pulled it back. But she whispered, if I eat the fig, I will die. That's nonsense, said the serpent. Look, and he took a big juicy bite out of the fig which he held. Look, Eve, I have eaten it and I am not dead. Nor will you die if you eat it. Then Eve said to herself, the serpent is eating the fig and no harm is coming to him. Adam is foolish not to eat it too. Right now I am better than the serpent. But if he eats the fig and I do not, he will soon be my superior. Oh, I better hurry. 
I will eat the fig, she said to the serpent. Give down, get one down for me. The serpent quickly reached up into the leaves and took a big ripe fig off the branch. Eve took it from him and was about to sink her teeth into it, but again she hesitated. I will not bite into it. Maybe I should eat just I shouldn't eat the fruit itself. I will be careful. First I shall just only bite the skin. So she scraped the skin with her front teeth and ate it. Then she held the fig out at arm's length and waited to see what would happen. Look, Eve said to the serpent, look, I ate a piece of the skin and I didn't fall to the ground. I didn't die. Nothing happened. Didn't I tell you that it was perfectly safe, said the serpent. You are right, Eve said. Nothing can happen to me if I eat the fruit too. And so Eve ate the whole fig. Then immediately she became frightened. Oh, serpent, she cried. Now I am afraid. Oh, you were wicked to persuade me to eat it. My husband will be angry. Oh, I am really frightened. Then she thought that if she could coax Adam into eating a fig, perhaps he would share her guilt. If I'm going to be punished for my disobedience, she said to herself, I do not want to suffer alone. So she took one of the figs to Adam, and he, not stopping to realize what she was giving him, ate the fig. But the moment he tasted it, he knew that he had committed a sin. And he cried, oh, why did you give me a fig from that tree? You have made me disobey God. That was the story which the winds told the peak of the mountain. Oh, it is a sad story, exclaimed the peak. Then surely God must have punished Adam and his wife. Yes, indeed, said the north wind. But before we tell you what happened to them, you will want to know who else was punished. Who else, said the peak, only Adam and Eve were guilty ones, weren't they? Why should anyone else suffer? The sin of the serpent was worse than that of Adam and Eve, the south wind said. Even though God had forbidden Adam and Eve to eat the fig, it was the serpent who tricked them into doing wrong. And God says that the one who persuades someone else to be wicked does more harm than the one who commits the sin. I can understand that, said the peak of the mountain. How was the serpent punished? His power of speech was taken away. He never spoke another word, And said the north wind. And his hands and feet disappeared. And now he must crawl through the mud and eat only dust. And from now on, the serpent and human beings will be enemies. So... Was the serpent punished, said the east, so was the serpent punished, said the east wind, and the surface of the earth was guilty too. And the south wind explained, you see, O mountain, the sun and the earth had been appointed to be witnesses to testify against Adam, should he break his promise. When he did, the sun covered his face and the world grew dark, but the earth, not knowing what to do, did nothing at all. And God said that was cowardly. But what could the earth have done? Well, she could have groaned, said the east wind. She could have rumbled, said the west wind. She could have quaked, said the north wind. Then the south wind said, the moon too was punished. The moon, cried the peak of the mountain. Why, the moon is a friend of mine. I speak to her every night as she moves around among the stars. Oh, tell me, why was my friend the beautiful moon punished? When Adam and Eve broke their promise, the north wind explained, everything in the universe wept with them. We winds howled, the sun wept, the stars, and all the angels shed bitter tears. The sea stormed and the clouds cried, and even God had pity for Adam and Eve, but the moon laughed. Oh, that was unkind, said the peak of the mountain. It was more than unkind, said the east wind. It showed that the moon had no mercy, so God had to punish her too, by forcing her to grow old each month to die and then to have to be reborn anew. From now on, O oh mountain, said the south wind, you will not see the moon always full and bright as in the past. In the future, you will see first a quarter moon at the beginning of the month, then a half moon, and then three quarter moon. Only for a day or two at the end of the month will you see the full moon in all her splendor and glory. Now whistled the north wind, now we will tell you what happened to Adam and Eve. At the very moment that Adam ate the forbidden fruit, he felt his whole body drawing and pulling together. His legs pulled up, his arms pulled in, his neck pulled down, and his shoulders drew together. 
I feel so strange, cried Adam. Something is happening to my body. I feel everything drawing and pulling. And still his body pulled, his legs pulled up, his arms pulled in, his necks pulled down, his shoulders drew together. And Adam looked at his legs and then at his arms and then at his knees and he touched his shoulders and he cried, oh, I am growing smaller. I used to be so big and tall and my head reached into the skies and now look, my body has shrunk. See how short I have become? My head does not even touch the treetops. Oh, what has happened to me? And the serpent laughed and laughed. You wonderful big stature has shriveled, Adam. And again, the serpent laughed. You used to be the tallest creature in the world. Now you are only of average size. Oh, cried Adam, this must be God's punishment for my having eaten the fig. While Adam was shrinking from his great size, something else was happening. To avoid seeing Adam's disgrace, the sun covered his face, causing the world to grow dark. The sun's darkness frightened Adam. Look how black the world has become. My great height has shrunk and now the world is dark and all because I ate that fig. Then he turned to Eve and said, oh foolish woman, why did you give me a fruit from that forbidden tree? Eve was frightened too and ready to cry. Let's hide among the trees, she whispered, so God can't find us. Do you think you can hide from God, Adam said? God can see everywhere, no matter where you hide. But I know you are afraid to be alone, so I will go with you. Before I ate the fig, I could, have, I could not have walked beneath the branches. I was too tall. But now for my sin, I am made small. Come and let us find shelter beneath the trees. Then Adam and Eve heard the sound of God approaching in the garden and they were afraid and they ran and crouched beneath the trees and God stood at the gate of the garden and said, tell me, Adam, where are you? From among the trees where he was hidden, Adam answered, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid. Never before were you afraid of my voice, Adam. You have heard it often. You have sinned, Adam. You have disobeyed me. That is why you now fear me. Now God wanted to give Adam a chance to repent for his wrongdoing. If he had only said he was sorry, God would have forgiven him at once. But Adam was stubborn. Besides, he was afraid to take the blame for what he had done. So instead of saying, I'm sorry and I repent of my sins, he tried to prove his innocence and said, it wasn't my fault. As long as I lived alone, I didn't sin. It was my wife. She tempted me. And God said, now you are committing two more sins. Beside being disobedient to me, you are disloyal to her and ungrateful to me. I did not give you a wife until you asked for one. I gave her to you to be a helpmate. You should have taken the responsibility and you should have said to your wife, no, we will not disobey God. But still, neither Adam nor Eve admitted that they were sorry for what they had done. So God had to punish them because they were stubborn and would not confess their mistake. He banished them forever from the wondrous Garden of Eden. And that is the story, said the North Wind, of how Adam and Eve were turned out of paradise. Come, said the South Wind, it's time for us to blow to our own corners. Come, we have tarried long. Goodbye, mountain, whist whistled the winds. Goodbye, cried the peak of the mountain. And the four winds blew to the north and the south, the east and the west. So that is our first midrash, and it explains some things about Adam and Eve. It gives you some reasons why the serpent uh, decided to tempt Eve. He was jealous. He wanted to be the one in charge instead of Adam. He thought that he could do that. Uh, and we see that Eve was afraid that she would be ruled over by someone else. So that was one of the reasons given to why she uh, took the bait and try things. Uh, but there are a lot more holes in that story. And part of the, the Midrash is trying to uh, fill in the blanks of what happened. So why was Eve afraid that someone would roll over her? That's a good question. So um, I also particularly like the part in the story about the blame where nobody fesses up to their mistakes. And when we read that in Midrash, we also know that as humans, we don't like to fess up to our mistakes. We always like to bring in extenuating circumstances or blame someone else. And yet, in this story, 
as in our story, we are to take responsibility for our actions, right? So that is the first Midrash. I'm so glad that you tuned in. And I don't like to take more than 20 minutes. Um, so I would like us to have a prayer. And then if you would like to read ahead for next Wednesday night, we are going to uh, read the story of uh, Cain and Abel, the Midrash that goes with Cain and Abel. And maybe we'll see if some questions about that are answered. I invite you to look at the story in Genesis 1, 2, and 3 and find something that you're interested in and write your own Midrash and then email it to me or uh, snail mail it to me. Uh, I would love to read them. And let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, bless our time together. Thank you for allowing us to be able to share these stories. Thank you for giving us such wonderful stories that we can look in, that we can discover your love for us, and that we can become better disciples of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a lovely evening. I hope that you all uh, can join us tomorrow night. Uh, we're having our Monday, Thursday service online. We'll, we'll be doing communion, so you need to come to the computer with your bread and your wine or juice, and we will talk about the story of the Last Supper and have a communion together. God bless. Bye-bye.